Good evening, everyone. Uh, tonight we're going to talk about the mitzvah of cheesecake and other Shavuos ideas. We know there's a custom to eat dairy products on Shavuos. Many people eat cheesecake, which is very delicious. I, uh, I'm actually kind of happy this year. In a certain way, there's a silver lining to having uh, coronavirus. I know it's very bad, but the silver lining is is that uh, every year after Shavuos at my call, people bring in cheesecake, all their leftover cheesecake, and it's very hard not to eat it. So I'm kind of glad that this year I won't have to face that challenge. But there is a custom to eat cheesecake on Shavuos. We'll hopefully discuss why that is and other ideas of Shavuos and how actually eating the cheesecake relates to the giving of the Torah and the whole idea of the holiday of Shavuos. This is a famous Beis Halevi who cites the Gemara in Psachim. The Gemara says, has a discussion on different holidays. How do we celebrate the Jewish holidays? Do we celebrate the Jewish holidays by indulging in physical pleasures because it's a holiday, we should rejoice? Or do we celebrate the holidays by doing spiritual pursuits? That by doing, uh, going to synagogue to Davin, by learning Torah. So there's a whole debate in the Talmud, and the way we paskin, the way we hold is that we have chatzil Hashem and chatzil Lechem. Half of a Jewish holiday should be for spirituality, and half should be for oneself to enjoy it, to eat good food, to have meat and wine, and celebrate the holiday. Half of it should be in a s- spiritual pursuits, and half of it should be in physical pleasures, obviously for the idea of the mitzvah. But the Gemara says that everybody agrees, the Batsaris, the Be'ina Nami Lechem, that on the holiday of Shavuos, all the rabbis agree, even though they had a debate about the other holidays, but when it comes to the holiday of Shavuos, all of the rabbis agree that you need to have lechem. You need to indulge in physical pleasures, in physicality. My time. Now, what's the reason? What is the reason that on Shavuos the, that we have to indulge in physical pleasures? So the Beis HaLevi says, I'm sorry, the Gemara says, My time, Yom Shenitna Batar Yisrael, because it is the day that the Torah was given to the Jewish people. Now, that seems like a very funny reason why we should indulge in physical pleasures, why we should have good food and good drink on Shavuos. What does the fact that the Torah was given have to do with that? I would think since the Torah is given, right, we usually picture Torah study as a totally spiritual pursuit, so why in the world will we engage in physical pleasures? And why does everybody agree that that's what should be done on Shavuos? So the Beis HaLevi cites a Gemara in Shabbos. Pei Ches Samad Beis, 88b, and I would like to read the Gemara. It's a famous Gemara, many many of us know. But it's worth it to uh, to learn again. It says, When Moshe went up to heaven to receive the Torah from Hashem, the angels said to Hashem, What is a child of a woman doing here? Meaning, why is there a mortal here who is going to receive the Torah? Why? He's here because he's going to get the Torah. This treasured thing you had in your treasured house, for it says 974 generations, before the world was created, you're going to give this holy thing which existed for so long to a mortal man, right? We're angels. We should get the Torah. Such a holy thing should go to us, not to, not to a man. What is, he quotes the Pasuk in uh, Tehillim, what is a man, Hashem is his glory, his glory is in the heavens, right? Uh, men, human beings are lacking, right? We're not, uh, we have uh, physical desires, we have a Yitzhahara. Why in the world would you give, they're asking Hashem, the angels are asking Hashem, why would you give the Torah to a human being when it could be given to us? which are purely angels, who are purely spiritual beings. So, Amr lo HaKadosh Baruch Hu Moshe. Hashem said to Moshe, Hechzor lahem tshuva. Moshe, answer them. Hashem tells Moshe to answer the angels. Amr lo Fanov. Rebbe Hashem lahem Yisrael, Hashem Yisrael, Hashem Yisrael, Hashem Yisrael, Hashem Yisrael, Moshe said, uh, God, I'm, I'm afraid. The angels, they're fire. They could totally destroy me. Their breath is fire. Amr lo achos bekisei kvodi. He says, grab onto my... Throne, my heavenly throne. Vechazalam chuvan answer them. Shenemar meachas panai kisa parsha alav ananu. Vam rav nachum malamit shapir shakai mezib shchinasa vananu alav. Amr lefanov. Rabbanu shalaylam. 
Torah nicely. Maksivba says Hashem, what's written in the Torah? Was Moshe speaking. What is written in the Torah? So this is Moshe answering the angels. God tells Moshe, answer the angels. Tell them why human beings should receive the Torah and not angels. So he says, what's written in the Torah? Torah. I'm the Lord your God who took you out of Egypt. Did you go down to Egypt that, uh, that Hashem rescued you, that he needs to say, I am the Lord your God who took you out of Egypt? So why do you need the Torah? It doesn't talk about you. It talks about people who were went down to Egypt. What else does it say in the Torah? Don't have other gods before you. There's a commandment in the Torah not to worship other gods. So angels, do you live amongst idolatrous nations that you need to be commanded to not worship other gods? Of course not. The Jewish people live amongst idolatrous nations. We need to be commanded in that. Shuv Maksivba, what else does it say in the Torah? Zachar Shem Hashem is Lakadsho. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Klumata Maisa Malacha, Shatem Srichem Shvus. Angels, you don't work that you need to rest on the seventh day. Human beings work. We need to rest on the seventh day. Shuv Maksivba, what else does it say in the Torah? Losisa, Losisa, it says, don't swear falsely. Masa Umatan Yesh Benechem. Right, when does, it, when does a person swear? When a person's in court, he has to make an oath, testify. When you have a claim against somebody else, or someone has a claim on you for business dealings. Angels, do you have business dealings? This commandment doesn't apply to you. Shuv Maksivba, what else does it say in the Torah? Kaved HaSavich HaVasimecha, honor your father and your mother. Ah, v'im yesh lechem, do you have a father, do you have a mother? Angels don't have parents. Shuv Maksivba, what else does it say in the Torah? Lo Sirtzach, it says don't kill. Lo Sinef, don't commit adultery. Lo Signov, don't kidnap. Do you have jealousy? Do you have a Yitzhahara? Do you have a desire to do evil? And after that, Hashem agreed. They agreed to him. So the angels come in front of God, say, Why are you giving the Torah to the Jewish people? We are angels, we are very holy. Hashem says, Moshe, answer them. So Moshe says, Do you have parents that you need to be commanded to honor your parents? Do you have jealousy that you need to be commanded not to kill? So human beings have those things. They apply to us. They apply to human beings, meaning the Torah was given to human beings because human beings have a Yitzhahara. We have a desire to do evil. We have a desire to go after our physicality. So it's gufa to us that we have this desire that God gave us the Torah, that we should follow the commandments to do what he wants. Angels don't have a Yitzhahara. They don't have a drive to do evil. They don't have any of the uh, any of these commandments that are not relevant to them. And Moshe answered that question. And that's why the Jewish people merited to get the Torah because of Moshe Rabbeinu's argument. And the Beis Halevi writes, that's why there's a special mitzvah on Shavuos that all the rabbis agree that we have to do physical things. Why? Because since we have a physical body and we have a Yetzirah, we have a guf in addition to a spiritual component and a shema. That's why we merited to have the Torah. Since we have a physical body, we merited to get the Torah. That's why all the rabbis in the Gemara agree that on Shavuos we have to do physical things by eating good foods and what and good foods and whatnot. Because it, it was because of that reason that we merited to get the Torah. So therefore, we celebrate on Shavuos the day when we get the Torah by doing those physical things to point that out and rejoicing in the fact that in the merit that we have a physical body and we could use the Torah to sanctify our lives, that that is the reason we merited to receive the Torah. Now, why cheesecake specifically? Why do we have dairy? There's a, a custom to have dairy on Shavuos. So the Beis Halevi, there's really two reasons I think he's saying. The first reason is that there are halachas of not eating meat and milk together. When a person has meat, he's not allowed to have milk for six hours. Germans, three hours. Some say Dutch, an hour. But when you have milk, First, you can have meat right after, if you have kinuach v'hadacha, which means that if you have milk, if you rinse your mouth out, you have like a drink in between, or and you have a cracker, something like that, then you're allowed to eat meat right after. So what the custom became on Shavuos is that in the morning, Shavuos morning, for like Kiddush or something, we have a milcha Kiddush, and then we have meat after, so we can, and what we do in between that is we wash our mouths out, and we eat something in between, so we could fill, fulfill all of the halachas, all of the Jewish laws, that were given to differentiate between eating between milk and meat. So therefore we have milk on Shavuos so we can fulfill these laws 
of eating between milk and, and meat. It's showing that, right, we eat. Human beings eat. We do physical things. And that's why we're giving the Torah. So we have milk to celebrate that fact, additional food. And since we're going to have meat after, we can fulfill all of the halachas of eating meat after milk, kinuach v'hadach, and doing all of those things. Not only that, the Gemara I just read, there's a different version in the Medrash, and it has another line, that Hashem says to the angels, He says, you know, there was a time when the angels, when you guys took on the form of a body and went down. You went down to, uh, to earth. When was that? That was when the three angels visited Avram Avinu. Our forefather Avram to tell him about the Sodom's destruction and to heal uh, to heal Sarah. When they came down, Avraham fed them and they ate meat and milk. So Hashem said to the angels, the one time that you guys had a physical body, you weren't able to keep the Torah. So, and now you want to accept the Torah? So the Beis Halevi says because of that, because of what Hashem said to them, that they didn't keep the Torah and the laws of meat and milk, we eat milk on Shavuos to show that we do keep the laws of meat and milk, that right after we have the milchig meal, we have uh, we do we rinse our mouths out and we have something in between and we have fleshigs, we have a meat meal to show that we do follow the laws of meat and milk. So again, the first reason is why do we have milchigs on Shavuos? Because Shavuos is a time where we celebrate the fact that we got the Torah because we have a physical body. So we have we do more mitzvahs uh, that we can that are uh, re- related to the physical body. So we have milk. And then we get to fulfill all of the mitzvahs of separating between, excuse me, between milk and and, uh, and meat. Now, the um, Beis Halevi asks another question here on the Gemara. Didn't the angels know this? Didn't the angels know they didn't have a body? Like, what, what were they asking? What was their whole argument with Moshe Rabbeinu? So he writes that, there was actually a deeper thing that the angels wanted here. The angels knew that they didn't have a body and couldn't fulfill the commandments because they didn't have parents, they don't work, that they could have a Shabbos, they don't have jealousy that they could be commanded not to kill. But there's another aspect of Torah. We've mentioned many times that there are two parts of Torah. There's the written Torah and the oral Torah. The written Torah is what it says in Chumash, right? The Chumash says you should wear them as a sign uh, between your eyes. That's all it says. Now, what what does it mean to wear them as a sign between your eyes? So the oral Torah, the oral tradition from Moshe Rabbeinu tells us that's tefillin. Tefillin, it's made a certain way. It has to be black. It has to have certain parchments. It has to have certain straps. All of those laws were transmitted orally. Now, it's very interesting that the way, you know, people always say, uh, often say, you know, oh, how can you, uh, you know, follow the Torah? There's so many opinions of the rabbis and um, you know, how can you follow what it says with there's so many different opinions? Well, guess what? That's how it was supposed to be. When Hashem gave the Torah to the Jewish people, He gave them the power to interpret the Torah. Now, that doesn't mean you can say anything willy-nilly, but there used to be a Sanhedrin, which is the Jewish court, and when the tradition got passed down, there were different rules of how to interpret the Torah, and different rabbis had different interpretations of the Torah. Now, they were all using the same rules. They weren't just, you know, willy-nilly saying, you can't say the Torah says I don't have to keep Shabbos, when it obviously says to keep Shabbos. But the Talmud HaChachamim, the rabbis, the sages of each generation, were given the power to interpret the Torah. And the proper interpretation was decided by the Sanhedrin, the rabbinical court in Jerusalem, the great rabbinical court. And Hashem made it that the Torah, the meaning of the Torah, the power of interpretation, and who decides what the Torah means... That was given to the rabbis, given to the Talmud HaChacham. That's what the angels wanted. The angels wanted that they should have the ability to be the ones who are Kovea Torah, who sets what Torah is. But the Moshe Rabbeinu and the Jewish people were the ones that merited to get that. And he writes, that's why we have two blessings. When we, uh, when we make the blessing on Torah, there are two blessings. One is Asher Bach Rabbanu Mikol Amim. Hashem chose us from all the nation. Venasalano was Taraso, and He gave us the Torah. That is going on the written Torah. That's when before we, someone gets an Aliyah, He reads that. That's the first blessing. After He reads the Torah, we say Asher Nasalano Torahs Ms. He gave us the true Torah. And He He planted it within us. And that is the blessing on the oral Torah. 
that the truth of Torah is what the rabbis say it is. It's a very tremendous, very powerful statement, right? Now, the rabbis are obviously trying to interpret the Torah with the rules that were given, but when the rabbis and the Sanhedrin paskins that this is the halacha, that's the halacha. And you know what? Even if they make a mistake, that is, that is the halacha. Since God gave the power of the rabbis of each generation of how to interpret Torah, when they make that interpretation, that is the interpretation of Torah, and that is the true interpretation of Torah. Uh, it's a, there's a famous uh, story, just to bring out this point, in the Gemara Bav Metzi, I'll just summarize, that Rabbi Lezer was having a, a debate um, with the rabbis in Toner Shalach Noi, a certain oven, is it pure, is it impure? And Rabbi Lezer said that the, um, the oven is pure, and the rabbis said it's impure. So Rabbi Lezer said, you know, if, if the halacha is like me, let the river go the other way. Let it start flowing the other way. And sure enough, a miracle happened and the river started flowing the other way. So you know what the rabbi said to him? We don't bring proofs from rivers. Then he says, well, if the, uh, if the halacha is like me, let the tree get up and move. And the tree got up and moved. So they said, we don't bring halachas from trees. So he said, well, if the halacha is like me, let the walls of the base medrash collapse. And the walls of the base medrash started to collapse. They said, we don't bring rise, we don't bring proofs from the walls of the base medrash. So he said, if the halacha is like me, let heaven declare it. And all of a sudden, a voice came out from heaven and said, the law is like Rav Lazar. So the rabbis famously replied, Lo he. the Torah is not from heaven. Meaning, and the story ends, that Hashem is sitting at that moment, smiling, quote-unquote smiling, and he's saying, my children, they've outsmarted me. Meaning that even though in heaven... The halacha was according to Rav Lazar. The Jewish law was that this oven was tahor. Since God, since the majority of the sages disagreed with Rav Lazar, and they said it's impure, and the power to decide Jewish law, and the power to interpret Torah was given to the sages of each generation, they are the ones who make the Torah what it is. The fact that heaven declared that it was, was pure was totally irrelevant. Because when God gave the Torah to the Jewish people, the power to decide the proper interpretation of Torah was given to the Torah scholars and to the rabbis of each generation. And that's what the angels wanted. The angels wanted that ability to, um, to be the ones who set the interpretation of Torah. Is, um, Vilna Gon says a similar idea. It's a very big principle in Judaism. Right? That's why also we have such respect for Torah scholars because, because um, not only are they just teaching Torah, but they're the ones who set what Torah is. And, um, you know, I was mentioning that, you know, you used to have, you have debates, right? You go into any yeshiva, there's debates. What's, what's the interpretation of Torah here? What's the halacha, this and that? You know, so back in the day, there was a Sanhedrin rabbinical court that made the final decision what the halacha is. But nowadays, since we don't have a Sanhedrin, that's why there are so many customs and different laws Right, when it comes to the major things, we all agree, right? We all have the same tefillin, we all shake a lulav and esrog on sukkahs, so we all sit in a sukkah on sukkahs, but we have different customs. Like I was mentioning before, Ashkenazi Jews will wait six hours, um, general Ashkenazi Jews, and most Sephardim, I believe, and uh, German Jews wait three hours. So when it comes to things like that, there are different customs, but when it comes to the major things, we do all agree, but there is no Sanhedrin that can paskin, that can decide what the final halacha is, because we don't have that anymore. So the, the Vilna Gon in Shira Shira, and this is in 3.11, he asks a question, is a, is a statement of the rabbis. It says, The way of Hashem is not like the way of people. When, when someone sells somebody something, he said, right, you sell an object, you get some money, you're a little sad that you lost an object. Of the Kodesh Baruch ain't okay, but Hashem is not like this. Nasan Torah Yisrael, he gave the Torah to the Jewish people, and he's happy. So the Vilna Gon asks a question. What's the comparison, right? We said, a human being gives a gift, and he's, uh, he's sad. But Hashem gives the Torah, and he's happy. The Vilna Gon says, no comparison. Usually you give something to somebody, you don't have it anymore. But Hashem gave the Torah to the Jewish people. He could still study it. Hashem could still learn the Torah. Why should he be sad that he gave the Jewish people? So the Vilna Gon writes this, this topic which we're, which we're mentioning. He says, He says, To the point, God gave the Torah, and He gave the ability to decide the interpretation of the Torah to human beings. He gave that gift to the Jewish people, that we interpret what the Torah says, the, the, the sages of the generation. So He'll say, so even if, 
when, so Hashem says, when the sages say, this is the halacha, Hashem says, that's the halacha, right? When the Jewish people decide that this is the halacha, Hashem agrees with them and says, you're right, this is the halacha, this is what has to be done. And it's what, what it's doing, it's very, um, a very powerful idea that in the heavens, the heavens base what the Jewish law is, God decides what the Jewish law is based on the interpretation of the sages. It's a tremendous, very powerful message of the ability that God gave to the sages of the Jewish people. Now, just a big disclaimer, when we say sages, we're talking about people that learn Torah honestly, and what they're trying to do is, you know, properly interpret the Torah, what it means, and they don't have an agenda you know, trying to push their own values into the Torah, meaning God gave the Torah with certain rules. He said, this is how you interpret it. And based on that, the way that they interpret it, that's the way that the Torah will um, will be. But it doesn't refer to somebody who, you know, goes against what the, uh, you know, goes against the rules that Hashem gave over uh, to us to make that in uh, interpretation. Okay, I just want to give a, another, one more answer to that question, right? We, uh, we asked or the Beis HaLevi asked, this whole back and forth between Moses, Moshe Rabbeinu, and the angels. He says, um, you know, why did you, you know, didn't the angels know that they didn't have a body and couldn't fulfill the mitzvahs in the Torah? So what were they trying to do? So the Beis HaLevi answered, what they wanted was, they wanted the power to interpret the Torah, which was given to the Jewish people. The Ramchal says a different answer, a very interesting answer. He writes, Shukran. He writes that there are, we mentioned the, the parts of Torah, the oral Torah and the written Torah, but there's another part of Torah. There are the secrets of Torah, the Kabbalah. They deal with very deep ideas into the creation of the world and the way Hashem interacts with the world and very, very uh, profound ideas into how God deals with the universe. And what the angels wanted, they wanted that part of Torah. They wanted the secrets of Torah. But the Ramchal writes that Moshe answered them, no, we should even get those secrets of Torah because we have a body. Meaning that angels don't have a Yetzirah. They don't have a drive to do evil. But human beings have a drive to do evil. And it's up to human beings. You can only do something. You can only make a tikkun, what's called. You can only change something and be proactive when you overcome your evil inclination. If you have a challenge to do something that is, uh, that is wrong and you decide to do something that's right. Angels don't have a desire to do something that's wrong. Therefore, they can't make tikkunim. They can't fix things that are wrong with the world. However, human beings who have that desire to do evil, they can fix those things that are wrong with the world. And when the human beings learn those secrets of Torah, they make those tikkunim, they make those, they fix those things which need to be corrected in the world. Had angels learned these secrets of Torah, they wouldn't have done anything. They wouldn't have had an effect in the higher uh, celestial, the higher spheres, because they don't have a Yitzhahar, they don't have any drive to do evil. But human beings who have this drive to do evil, and they sit and they study the secrets of Torah, that is poel, that makes very... Profound, imp uh, profound impacts uh, in the world. And he has a very interesting discussion here about how it's through learning the Kabbalah and what's called Sod, that's what's going to bring Mashiach. And he ties it into, um, you know, we learned in the Darach Hashem Shir that the whole purpose of creation is for the world to recognize that God is one and to get to the spiritual level that humanity was at before Adam sinned, right? Before Adam ate from the apple, from sorry, from the fruit, whatever it was, before he ate from the fruit, uh, the world was on a very high spiritual level, and when he sinned, the world came down to a very lowly level. So the whole purpose of existence is to get back to that level where uh, we were before Adam sinned. And the only beings that could bring the world back to that lofty level are human beings, the descendants of Adam, who have a desire to do evil and yet choose to do good. When we as human beings choose to do good, even though we have that desire to do evil, that makes... Tikkunim, what's called, it fixes up those things which are ruined in the world. And he writes that it's through the secrets of Torah, studying the secrets of Torah and the Sod and the Kabbalah, that will bring Mashiach to come. Very, very interesting. This is again in the Ramchal and Derech Eitz Chaim, which is printed often at the end of uh, at the end of Mesilo Shisharim. So he writes that the angels, what they wanted, they didn't want the, you know, the revealed part of Torah. They wanted to learn the secrets of Torah and the Kabbalah. 
But nevertheless, that was given to human beings because only when human beings study this will they have a positive impact in the upper spheres in the spiritual world because they have this Yetzirah, this desire to do evil. So again, just to summarize, on, uh, on Shavuos, we received the Torah. The reason that we got the Torah is because we have uh, a Yetzirah. God wanted the Torah to go to beings which have a desire to do evil, but they choose to do good. So he gave his direction to humanity uh, of how he wants human beings to live. He didn't give it to angels. The Torah wasn't given to perfect beings. One should never feel that he's unworthy to practice the Torah, to study Torah, because that's what God uh, gave us. God gave us the Torah to imperfect beings so that we could learn to perfect ourselves. And uh, the way we, uh, that's why in Shavuos we have a lot of uh, a lot of meal, a lot of a good food, and some physical indulgence because um, because the Torah was uh, given to human beings because we have that desire, and um, the aim. That's 